we have discussed there are two types of death one is called somatic death other is called molecular death somatic death when the vital functions they stop working in couple of second to couple of minutes time when the vital function they stop working body loses control over its parts and there is cessation of respiration cessation of circulation cessation of the mental power that comprises of immediate signs of death and this is called somatic death the molecular death starts uh, from couple of uh, minutes to hours to day and when the body which is comprising of cells million billion trillions of cells they start dying one by one one by one that is called molecular death the medical legal importance of molecular death is that uh, for transplantation reason we are coming to that today our topic will be focusing on the late signs of death the late signs of death they start from couple of hours to couple of days time and uh, when the body is lying unattended is not in a freezer the body is lying unattended in a open atmosphere free free excess of air is there the late signs of death will start the late signs of death are decomposition or putrefaction may be a deposit formation may be mummification how the body looks like you know this was an exhumation which i was offering you and we had this <clears throat> on 31st of uh, this march at new karachi this is an exhumation this is the body which we took it out is in a coffin and uh, this body was exhumed an exhumation is a digging out of a body from the grave for reexamination purposes when the foul play has been suspected again exhumation is a digging out of a body i will not repeat it again okay just register it that what is exhumation basically autopsy we are doing in a autopsy room post mortem examination we are doing in a post mortem room <coughs> excuse me and uh, exhumation is being done in the graveyard where the person is being buried somebody is going to identify the grave either the io either the relative this was the grave where we buried what is exhumation it is the digging out of a body from the grave for reexamination purposes when foul play has been suspected the magistrate will issue the orders to go through with an uh, exhumation it is mostly been done at the early hours that is fajr time because at that, that time there is no through fair over there <clears throat> and uh, exhumation is being performed we will have an identification of the grave they will take out the body they will put on the table just next to the grave side and uh, the coffin will be opened the soil you know, one pound uh, above one pound below one pound from the side is being taken mostly and uh, the sample of the coffin is being taken the body is being opened depending on the time period how much time has passed the body will present somewhat like this <clears throat> this body was uh, four months old and uh, we have not touched uh, the what right was lying same way same manner this was uh, a person who died and we have to look for the cause of death this is another body which was uh, buried and you can see the 
bandage over the above the umbilical area and uh, the body is swollen and uh, you can see the skin is peeling off this is another body this is what we have done somewhere near hogs bay uh, last month <clears throat> This is how the body looks like. Right? So uh, maybe the body is uh, a day old, maybe the body is week old, maybe the body is month old, maybe the body is year old, maybe the body is 10 years old. You can do the exhumation all over the world up till 10 years time. But in Pakistan, it's a rule that you can have an exhumation up to any extent of any time, uh, maybe 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. We get the uh, some most of the time, the causes, the injuries, the fractures are being observed. <clears throat> I think we offered you on that day, uh, there were three postgraduate students who were accompanying us and uh, nobody turned up well. So death and changes after death is coming under thanatology and thana is the death and logy is the study and thanatology is the scientific study of the phenomena of death and processes relating to the death. <clears throat> the Thanos is a Greek word, old Greek word means uh, personification of the death. So Thanatology means the study of death. We have discussed about different scientists gave us an idea about the death. The Muller said the death, uh, dying is a process and death is not a moment of life. Shapiro, he, he said, irreversible loss of properties of living matter. Again, same thing, brain, heart, lung. And rental and Smith, Smith, complete and persistent cessation of respiration and circulation. And the claim said when the destruction of brain has been established, the individual is dead. <clears throat> How you establish your diagnosis? You establish your diagnosis, still waiting for the student to join us. We have not reached the topic. I'm just making a review of my previous class. <clears throat> How you establish diagnosis of death, that is, you will find the situation creating problems. Sometimes some kind of a confusional states are there and you are not sure whether the person has died or not. Like a person who has taken uh, uh, sedatives or hypnotics, uh, the medicines for sleeping preparation taken in a larger dose and maybe in hypothermia, modern mean for resuscitation, like if the patient is on a ventilator, suspended animation and electrocution. I told you on that day, the suspended animation is a condition in which uh, the, it is called upper in death, or uh, the, from outside you feel that person has died, but basically the vitals are on such a low pitch that the person has not died. He is maintaining his life, by having uh, all the vitals on very low pitch. This is called suspended animation. The phases of death or the types of death, I told you somatic death and molecular death. The somatic death is uh, extinction of the personal, uh, personality, cessation of the function of three systems called the systemic death or the clinical death. We just talk with each other that uh, clinically he has died or maybe the brain death has occurred, or maybe the person has a somatic death. And just now the vital function has stopped working and uh, this is called somatic death. Body loses control over its part. There is a cessation of respiration, cessation of circulation, cessation of the mental power. Then it is followed by molecular death. As I said, the body is comprising of Cells, million, billion, trillions of cells, they start dying depending on the oxygen requirement. We, it start uh, progressing disintegration of the individual cell after somatic death, also called cellular death. 
Now, the molecular death has a medical legal importance for transplantation reasons because the ability of the various cells to withstand anoxia, there are few of the cells, they stay for longer. There are few of the cells, they die earlier. I'm not going in detail about the permanent tissue or maybe the labile or maybe, but, but for transplantation, the nerve, they can stay alive for three minutes and the muscles for three hours, then the cornea for six hours, the skin for 12 hours and the sperm in the posterior for next, uh, for three days time in female genital tract. So if you want to take out, uh, the person has donated his cornea, you have to take out within four to six hours time. And uh, it's not that uh, <clears throat> common in Pakistan, but most of the time we are getting donations from Sri Lanka. The people, they donate. <clears throat> One of our professor, he donated his liver. And uh, when he died, his, his uh, you know son called up and said, come on, come and take a, because he has all donated this. So it is, it is very important. And uh, the time period is very important for transplantation reasons. So the nerves stand for three minutes, muscles for three hours, cornea for six hours, skin for 12 hours, then the sperm or spermatozoa uh, in the posterior for next. Uh, in the female genital tract for uh, three days' time. For transplantation reason, time period between two stages, somatic and molecular death is very important. And uh, if the liver is being uh, donated, <clears throat> it uh, should be preserved within 15 minutes. Kidney should be preserved within 45 minutes. Heart should be preserved within one hour time and uh, <clears throat> may be preserved properly for further transplantation, for further, you know. Uh, now, the diagnosis of death, there was an old concept, there's a new concept, and we have already dis discussed that the new concept is a brain death or a brain stem death. It is actually death of a brain stem and containing vital centers over there, which controls vital function of the body, respiratory center, etc., etc. Old concept was Cessation of respiration movement and detectable heart sound, it means that the stoppage of the cardiorespiratory complex is called uh, the death. But uh, new concept says that the brain death or brain stem death, it is actually death of a brain stem containing vital function. Most of the countries, they are following the Howard report. It is followed in majority of the companies. Uh, the basis for diagnosis as a person is unresponsive, non-receptive for stimuli. There is no stimuli and uh, no response, no movement of breathing, no spontaneous breathing for uh, for a couple of minutes time. And uh, when you switch off the artificial means or support or a ventilator, there will be no response up to three minutes time. There will be no reflexes as we discussed. There will be flat ECG for five minutes straight, uh, straight line will confirm death. <clears throat> what is brain death? The brain death, the concept of brain death is a great importance legally, ethically, in relation to organ transplantation. It is of three types. Whole brain death is there. Cortical death is there. Brain stem, stem death is there. The whole brain death, when the cerebral cortex and the brain stem are going to be destroyed in this type of a death is a whole brain death. Cortical death is a cortex alone is destroyed due to some drug, trauma, short period of, of hypoxia. Then the victim may be in a deep coma but have a functioning brain stem and therefore be able to sustain spontaneous respiration. But this condition is called the vegetative state or a persistent vegetative state. The brain stem death, the, as we discussed, if the brain stem is damaged due to trauma and the cerebral edema, hemorrhage, hypoxia, infection, or then the vital centers in the medulla may be destroyed, causing the respiratory motor system to fail and consciousness is also permanently lost due to damage in the ascending reticular activity system. 
then the brain stem death is been how you certify <clears throat> um one of the student here asked me sir when like uh, what amount of time needs to be uh, for organ to be taken from uh, for transplantation like heart liver i just uh, mentioned that how much time is required i'm coming and i will go back to slide then the certification of the death how you certify death being a doctor bilateral dilatation of the people will be there and complete absence of reflexes will be there complete absence of respiration is there and there will be no bp the person will be bp less person will be pulse less person will have no uh, respiration person will have a dilated pupil not reacting to the light and uh, uh, when you talk about brain death then you know you examine and the dolls eye movement will be positive reflexes will be lost etc etc this is how you now uh, these are the time period for which they, they depend these uh, organs depending on the oxygen requirement if they go towards anoxia then they are going to die in in this particular time period you have to take out uh, before that and uh, for transplantation of the liver kidney heart it is 15 minutes to 1 hour time so this is how you declare brain death certification of brain brain death now we start with the late signs of death the late signs of death the late signs of death starts after after couple of days time to couple of weeks time the immediate signs of death were from couple of minutes to couple of second to couple of minutes time then uh, the early changes used to start from couple of minutes to couple of hours time and uh, the late signs they start uh, from couple of days to couple of weeks time this is of the report the late signs of death uh, they are called decomposition if you are keeping a biscuit in a vacuum jar obviously they will remain fresh and if the biscuits are lying on the table they become soggy in couple of hours to couple of days time they become soggy they become soft they become tasteless when the body is inside the coffin inside the blanket inside the room free access of air is not there the late signs of death will start lately but will start the decomposition or a putrefaction it is resulting because of the two uh, two processes one is the internal enzymes they will start eating the flesh and the bacterial action the bacteria will become opportunistic bacteria they will start eating the flesh the late signs of death there are two processes one is uh, bacterial action other is autolysis autolysis is a self and the auto is a self and lysis is obviously breaking down of the cell after death the permeability of a cell membrane increases which allows release of various enzymes in the cytoplasm like a uh, proteolytic glycolytic lipolytic action without bacterial action temperature affect its rate slow by cold and uh, vice versa if it is a cold weather the process will be slow if it is a hot weather process will be fast as written vice versa on that day i told you i gave you example that uh, when you want to delay the putrefaction you keep the stuff in a fridge 
And when you want to stop the process of putrefaction, you keep in a freezer. But it is not necessary that when you keep in a freezer, the process which has been stopped, when you will take it out, it will get thawed, then the continuation will be there. So after death, the cells will lose its permeability and will increase uh, mem uh, of cell membrane increases, which release various kind of enzymes. And in early, there will be parenchymatous tissue, brain and glandular tissue leads to liquefaction necrosis of the tissue. There are a few of the things which will become liquefied and they will be drained out just like a water. When you will use a water, it will be drained out because it has gone to a liquefactive necrosis. The putrefaction by outside and inside body, the flies, maggots, microbes, and anaerobic flora intestines, uh, produced by bacterial enzymes, anaerobic variety, and also bomb fungi. These bacteria are there, and these bacteria, the most uh, opportunistic or most disgusting or most uh, aggressive one is the Clostridia welchii. And this Clostridia welchii will uh, make, uh, will be the main causative organism which is going to eat the flesh. And the gases will be formed because of that, the this is produced by bacterial enzymes and anaerobic variety and also from fungi. And the bacteria like Clostridia welchii, which will produce hemolysis, liquefaction of the blood clots, disintegration of the tissue, and lately the gases will be formed because of that. All the body will be solid, full of gases. And this is when the gases are under the skin and body has a blotting effect. The face will make a protrusion. The anus, the vagina will have a protrusion. Eyes will become provident when the body is lying unattended. Then uh, this condition is called false pugilistic attitude. The pugilistic attitude is when the body gets burned. The body gets 100% burns. The body will have a boxer's attitude somewhat like this. Because of the extensive tendons, they are being burned. And rigor mortis, we have discussed that it is, a, it is a shortening and stiffening of the muscles after death. And uh, rigor mortis, cadaveric spasm, the person goes directly to the cadaver. But this condition, when the body will be swollen and will have a plotting effect, will all have a stiffening. And this is because the gases inside will be called as a false pugilistic attitude. The microbes, the streptococci, staphylococci, proteus, E. coli, in addition to Clostridia welchii, there are bacteria of putrefaction called Clostridia welchii, E. coli, staphylococci, uh, Staphylococci, deep uh, proteus, E. coli, these are, they spread through vessels and proteins and carbohydrates act as a culture media and will be growing over, over, over these uh, carbohydrates and maybe the proteins. After that, the enzymes, their role. The, let's see, Thanase produced by Clostridia welchii hydrolyzes the lecithin of the cell membrane. There are a few of the factors which favor bacterial action and which uh, enhance the putrefaction. It comes in BCQ. That loss of protective mechanism, if the skin is open, if a fall in oxygen and rise in hydrogen is there, fluidity of the blood and carbohydrate and protein in the blood, pre-existing infections before death. If the body was infected before death, the body was having septicemia. The body was in a gutter with the hydrogen sulfide. 
maybe the body was having open wounds the body was having fall in oxygen and rise in hydrogen the putrefaction will be faster the hot climate will enhance the putrefaction the free excess of air will enhance the putrefaction so what will be the result what will be the result there will be color changes there will be evolution of the gases there will be liquefaction if the body is lying unattended in a jungle you will find in 36 to 42 hours the gases will be formed in 46 hours to 2 to 3 days you will find that the body will have a marbling type of appearance marbling type of appearance is all the veins will have hemoglobin been broken down will confirm convert into sulfur met hemoglobin and all the veins will become I, i have a picture i think about it and all the veins will become prominent over the body when the body has gone towards uh, full of gases in, in a uh, false pugilistic attitude in the 36 to 42 hour all the veins will become prominent and this is called the marbling this condition called marbling what is the reason to it the reason is that when uh, the body veins they become prominent all the hemoglobin is being broken down is being converted into sulfur met hemoglobin and all the veins will become very much prominent the gases which are being evolved because of the autolysis and the bacterial action i told you the bacteria they are clostridia welchii e coli protea streptococci staphylococci <clears throat> they start eating the flesh and the autolysis different enzyme the gases are being formed because of these bacteria the gases are being formed like uh, maybe sulfuretted hydrogen methane ammonia and uh, the most disgusting smell which is uh, being coming out from the body is sulfuretted hydrogen and uh, the body will be full of gases in 3 4 days the nails will be coming out in 8 10 days the hairs will be falling down in 10 12 days all the soft part of the body will go toward liquefactive necrosis will become black just like my shirt all the body will go toward liquefactive necrosis and all the soft part will leave the hard part and will fall on the ground and all the body will be skeletonized in 10 to 12 days time but before that before that because the gases are coming out because the gases are coming out they attract the maggots up to kilometer they attract the maggots just like vultures are coming towards the dead body and the maggots get attracted and the maggots they start eating the flesh or the oral cavity in the anal area in the vaginal area and the beggars will get attracted and will start laying the eggs and after that in 36 to 42 hours the maggots will get attracted they will start eating the flesh the pressure because the pressure the secretions are coming out some hissing sound is coming out from the anus and from the mouth and this is full of gases and the gases is attracting the maggots is a bcq or is a is a viral question that why, how the maggots are being attracted because of these foul smelling gases especially sulfuretted hydrogen this will attract the maggot 36 to 42 hours the maggot will start eating the flesh for 24 hours they keep on eating they keep on eating they become healthy fat and they in another 2 to 3 days uh, in 24 hours they will lay the eggs all around the orifice in 2 to 3 days turn to larva another 2 to 3 days it turns to pupa another 2 to 3 days 6 to 9 days it turns to adult and 9 to 12 days time half of them they stay up half of them they fly off and this is called entomology the study of maggots called entomology when you perform autopsy or when you perform exhumation and the maggots are there you collect the maggots 
and you put maggots in in a jar and the jar containing of alcohol you will put these maggots and these maggots they will just die you will send it to the entomologist who will let you know what is the exact age of these maggots and uh, these maggots they give you an idea what is the time sensitive the color change the result of putrefaction because of bacterial action and autolysis the color change in the early stage due to the diffusion of hemoglobin you know, through the vessels the, the tissue shows red and brown color in the tissue hemoglobin derivatives combined with sulfur containing combination compound forming uh, sulfamate hemoglobin and changes the color into greenish black as the cecum is the on the right side the first sign of uh, late sign will start on the right iliac fossa because the cecum is the most superficial part of the intestine this changes in uh, perceive first there is about 12 to 18 hours sign in summer and 1 to 2 days time in, in the winter the discoloration further spreads over entire abdomen and it starts right iliac fossa and uh, because of the cecum is over here and it will start getting evolved when it will involve whole of the body the discoloration further spreads on the entire body the genital the chest the neck the face arms leg all of them they will be full of gases will be swollen and will uh, show signs of putrefaction late signs of death have started if you are keeping the dead body you cannot keep the dead body uh, outside the freezer or the cold storage if somebody is going to join and more time has to pass then better keep the body in a cold storage and bring the body at the time of burial and uh, an hour before the burial otherwise the signs of putrefaction will start but there are variation signs of late signs of death or uh, the putrefaction will start bef- uh, just at once from the time of death or maybe half an hour uh, before the time of death when the body was already infective or was the body in a septicemic shock or was the body having the injuries over it the putrefaction will be faster the marbling effect i told you the marbling effect is in 36 to 42 hours or uh, the putrefactive bacteria is spread more easily in the fluid and tend to colonize it will go in the vessels because it can spread more easily in the fluid the superficial veins will get stained reddish purple is due to hemolysis of the red cell and these vascular chan- channels again against uh, background of pale dermis because there was no he- normal homeostasis the marbling effect will start and this will be 36 to 48 hours 36 to 42 hours but most of the places it is in 36 to 42 hours. the marbling effect is a prominent toneless superficial veins filled with hemolyte hemolytic blood or broken blood or the blood uh, converted to sulfamate hemoglobin the clotted blood becomes fluid and which causes disappearance of post mortem liquid in later this color changes spread all over the body this is a condition uh, superficial skin is slowing off and this uh, marbling effect it comes in each and every body unresidental some kind of hemorrhagic diseases are there but uh, this will appear this condition is called the marbling effect right always been asked now gases the complex protein and carbohydrate compound disintegrate and produce and produces uh, gases like uh, sulfuretted hydrogen methane ammonia and uh, maybe phosphorylated hydrogen collection of these gases in the loop of intestine lead to distension of the abdomen and uh, opening the abdomen cavity these gases comes out with a force with a hissing sound and when you open the body for uh, the autopsy the, the intestine are full of gases bad uh, smelling foul smelling gases will come out and because if the body is lying unattended and you are not doing autopsy and it is lying in a jungle open atmosphere free access of air is there 
the gases will be formed and these gases will make a pressure towards the face and the mouth and on the anus there will be prolapse, there will be protrusion of the tongue and the eyeball become prominent and uh, these are because of the pressure effects of the gases, putrefactive gases, which has evolved in the intestine, etc., etc. I hope you are with me. Why these gases not come out itself through or if it's through? Well, uh, the question is how permanent marbling in dark skin? Look, uh, the I gave you example last time that uh, this is the condition, this is the mechanism, these are the signs which appear on a fairer skin and a darker skin. And uh, like uh, ragged mortars, it is present in a, in a voluntary muscle and an involuntary muscle. So if it is a dark skin, whether it is a fair skin, in the fair skin, it will be more prominent. In darker skin, it will be less prominent, just like a bruise. The bruise uh, or a kadma or uh, this uh, uh, extravasation of blood from the capillary due to the blood trauma in a live person, bruise can be on any part of the body. Swelling, inflammation, edema will be there. And signs of inflammation are present. But uh, the bruise is present even in a darker skin or uh, there are exceptional conditions that uh, the person should uh, have a less supportive tissue, the person should have uh, uh, be less muscular. Like you can make a bruise in a female more easily and in a male with a difficulty. In a normal person uh, easily, but a person who is going to gym or who's a boxer or who's exercising, it is very difficult because they have a good supportive tissue. Same way, the question what she asked me, oh, was the gas this prominent in marbling dark skin person? Yes, it has been found, but in very darker skin, sometimes it is, you know, difficult to localize. So these are the gases, evolution of the gases. Sulfur hydrogen is the most uh, aggressive one uh, of, of the disgusting gas. Methane, ammonia, phosphorated hydrogen, etc. Collection of these gases in the loop of intestine, they make distension, they make pressure effect, they make blotting effect, they make protrusion of the eyeball, they make the, the tongue uh, get protruded, etc. Inners get uh, prolapsed, etc. These gases uh, entrapped in closed area, go on accumulation, lead to uh, the pressure effect, make protrusion of the eyes, as I said, solemn appearance, this is called blotting effect. The face becomes solemn because the gases are there and these gases, they make a blotting effect of the face eyes become prominent, oozing of the fluid from the orifice, maybe you will become frightened that what has happened, maybe some foul play has been taken place, etc. because the blood was coming out from the mouth, blood was coming out from the nose, no? Oozing of the fluid from the orifices like nose, ear, inner, vagina, because of these pressure effects, the blood became fluid and uh, most of the time it obeys the law of gravity and then it's been pushed out because of the pressure. Postmortem blisters due to separation of the layer of the epidermis, as you have seen in, over there in marbling, expulsion of the fetus in a pregnant woman and the protrusion of rectum through anus, these findings will be there. Postmortem blister formation due to separation of layer, loosening of the hair, teeth and nail, they will start falling down after some time. Protrusion of the cavity content from the open wound and the peeling of the cuticle leading to degloving, degloving of the skin will be there, socketing of the skin, hands and feet, uh, they will have uh, separation of the, you know, the skin. And uh, uh, in a, in a post-mortem, we, we, when we get degloving, we just collect it and we put in a saline and to, to preserve for identification. Then uh, there are different fungi, photobacterium, fissurae, and uh, armelia, mainly body some uh, submerged underwater surface due to gases, they also. Now, uh, body sometimes when lying unattended in a jungle or somewhere, it gives a shiny type of looking, blackish shiny type of looking because of the post-mortem 
luminescence uh, shining look is due to light producing organism like uh, photobacterium and the uh, almeria these are the two of them a decomposed body looks somewhat like this and how uh, you can uh, the swollen appears the skin is peeling off brown discoloration of the blisters all these things will be there then liquefaction will be there you will find that the, the liquefactive necrosis or this colligative uh, putrefaction starts in 5 uh, uh, to 10 days time and softening of the tissue as i said it goes toward liquefactive necrosis and in 10 to 12 days time all the soft part will leave the hard part and the all the body will be skeletonized because it has gone towards the liquefactive necrosis the the sequence of putrefaction which organ putrefy early and which organ putrefy later this is the early putrefaction will be larynx and the trachea and uh, the one which uh, putrefy last will be prostate and uh, the uterus in a in a non pregnant woman or uh, uh, will be there larynx trachea will be earlier stomach intestine spleen liver lung brain heart kidney prostate skin muscle etc etc these uh, they they just putrefy in a same manner so the prostate will be the one which putrefy later and uh, if the body is decomposed and uh, all the putrefaction has completed you will look for the prostate will putrefy most lately and non gravid uterus will putrefy most Time, most of the time lately for larynx trachea they would be earlier skeletonization the time required for completion depend mainly on factors like post mortem eating by carnivorous animal like jackals dogs vultures etc they eat away soft tissue and produce yawning effect which are to show defect devoid of hemorrhage the bone decay with the loss of protein and ultimately complete conversion of all organic material into uh factor affecting rate of putrefaction i told you if the temperature is high the putrefaction will be faster than the other the putrefaction will be faster if free access of air moisture should be there air should be there and the clothing and covering age build cause of death the degree of mutilation or rate of putrefaction is being considered the casper dictum is one of the condition that is the rate of putrefaction that how it is being processing uh, progressing and processing is called the casper dictum temperature high temperature will make uh, it more faster and when the clothes are there and the gases have been formed and the gases are being formed all the body will become you know tight with the with the clothes there will be lines appearing creases and these creases are called vibrisses these creases because of the pressure effect of the gases over the clothes called the vibrisses then uh, body is going towards putrefaction in 10 to 12 days time because the bacterial action and the autolysis the putrefaction has started gases are being formed i told you the name of the gases i told you the name of the bacteria which are responsible for putrefaction too things are responsible one is bacterial action and other is autolysis there will be shining type of look of the body which is lying unattended because of the such and such the uh, fungi etc then maybe this body which you have buried in a water logged soil or maybe when the body was buried in a soil and when you were coming back in old days we used to have rains for two days three days continuously been raining and uh, water table becomes high when you buried the body the water table came high and uh, the body is in a water 
or maybe the body is lying in a jungle or in in a agricultural field in between the crop and over there there is a water or there is a water locked soil or body is in a water or body is being thrown in a water from the ship maybe the body which is lying in a water locked soil or humid atmosphere is there the body which was going towards putrefaction will take a left turn which is called a modification process of putrefaction called adipocere formation or saponification process again the body was going towards putrefaction because the body was lying unattended because of the bacterial action in the autolysis there were the factors which were responsible for making the putrefaction they were enhancing the process or they were retarding the process there were few of the condition which were retarding the process was when the body is in the water body got drowned maybe the body was inside the coffin maybe the body was inside the blanket maybe the body was inside the room 90 year old lady grandmother she was in the room she used to live alone there are many patient of mine who live alone and nobody is there to take care of them maybe the children has gone to uh, job for to other countries and they are lying in a bed and if they have a heart attack or they die for some reason the doors are closed from inside the windows are closed from inside they are in a blanket the putrefaction will be double delayed right but it is not so that it will not go towards putrefaction it will be double delayed or will triple delayed when i am having you know online class i cannot give you more and more examples when we are having a physical class uh, in a lecture hall we can uh, make you understand more easier in a more easy manner and by more uh, specification more examples but because uh, it, it is uh, a recorded uh, lecture and maybe you are lying sleeping or roaming and joining lately having a breakfast and coming and joining this maybe you will not be following properly but anyway the body is going towards putrefaction and uh, body is being buried in a in a water locked soil or maybe humid atmosphere is there or the water table is high or the rainy weather is there or body in the water the body will have a modification process of putrefaction this is called adipocere formation in other words we call it with a saponification process this is because of the conversion of body fats into oleic and sterolic acid this is a conversion of body fat into oleic and sterolic acid and the body gets a waxy type of looking just like this slide and uh, it gets a waxy type of looking just like uh, when you apply oil over your body and you take a bath water slips from the body this is just like that body will have a waxy type of looking and uh, it goes towards uh, arsenic uh, somebody has asked me a question the um, this uh, few of the poison they retard uh, the putrefaction there are few of the poisons which retard putrefaction but the example which you have given me it uh, enhances or it uh, makes the putrefaction because in this uh, poison there is a diarrhea severe diarrhea severe vomiting and person will be having uh, 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 in uh, another question is uh, uh, in egypt cairo there is a museum and mummified bodies are lying over there even in london museum one of the bodies lying a uh, uh, couple of bodies are lying over there with uh, which are be mummified the answer is that uh, mummification is being done artificially as well by injecting lead arsenate from the femoral vein and when we used to have uh, dead bodies in our time we used to have 10 dead bodies in a dissection hall and they used to inject lead arsenate from the femoral vein and uh, body water used to get evaporated all the uh, muscles used to take their uh, features like a deltoid like sartorius etc etc gluteus medius gluteus maximus they used to take their anatomical features rusty type of looking is there body water has been evaporated this is been done by artificial means and that's 
what uh, is lying over there uh, in uh, Cairo and uh, in London and few other places as well. This is how they used to make. Anyway, coming back to the point, coming back to the point that adipocene formation has been formed because of the um, you know, body fats into oleic and steroleic acid, all the body will have the features, all the injuries will be very much clear and uh, it takes nearly nearly one week to five weeks to develop as uh, the putrefaction was completed because of the bacterial action, the autolysis in 10 to 12 days time and uh, the vultures and the dogs and the wolves and all these, they used to eat the flesh and uh, it become more earlier. But in 10 to 12 days, all become liquefactive necrosis, go to a liquefactive necrosis, and the black type of uh, uh, mass will leave the heart part and will uh, skeletonized body will be lying over there. In a deposit formation, it will take one week to five weeks to develop, and uh, facts are being converted, features will be saved, injuries will be clear. And all the features will be saved because of the conversion. Of, it starts in a male from the chest. It starts from a female from the buttocks. And lately, all the body will be a deposit. Now, the damp and warm atmosphere is uh, important. There is a gradual hydrolysis and hydrogenation of the fat. And the palmic, uh, palmitic acid, oleic acid, combines with the calcium and form insoluble uh, ammonium ions and uh, it makes a form insoluble soap, sterilic acid or uh, hydrosteric acid. So the, these uh, fats are being converted into oleic and steroleic acid. They, this is the process by which adipocene formation is being, you know, taken place. It takes one week to five, one week to five weeks to develop. These cluster perfusion produces lecithinase, which leads to hydrolysis and hydrogenic later with sponification. The environment becomes acidic and prevents bacterial action, and hence putrefaction gets arrested and does not progress because of uh, this uh, deposit sponification process. The properties: it will be strong ammonia smell in early stage, followed by sweetish offensive smell. Fresh deposit formation is soft, moist, whitish, translucent, and old deposit is dry, hard, cracked yellowish in color and brittle, insoluble water, but dissolved in the ether and alcohol. It is inflammable and burns with the yellow flame. And the time required is one week to five weeks to develop in summer temperature climate on average three to six months. And it may persist for years and years if it is lying the same way. There was a question that half of the body in the Jehmabad area was outside and half of the body was immersed in a water, then, you know, half of the body will go towards petrifaction and half of the body will go towards adipocene formation, which was immersed in a water, or half of the body will go towards mummification and half of the body will go towards adipocene formation. The distribution, the fat deposits, the um, superficial to deep in direction, Face, female breast, buttocks, uh, or pericardial, mesenteric, pancreas, etc. Medical legal apply, helps in establishing identity because it will uh, preserve the identity. May help in asserting cause of death from the wounds because it will stay the same. Give an idea about time since death as one week to five weeks to develop. Other parameters uh, to decide uh, going back. This is a this was a deposit formation that was a modification process of putrefaction. The other is called mummification, which uh, the student were talking about the um, Egypt Egypt Museum and uh, uh, mummification is body was going towards putrefaction because of the bacterial action and the autolysis. Uh, pre excess of air was there and the body was in open atmosphere, lying unattended and the putrefaction is going on. But when the person, he dies in a dry and hot atmosphere, like in a, in a Sahara desert or somewhere, and he has lost his direction, he has lost his uh, uh, animal, maybe the camel or maybe the horse has uh, disappeared, and he, he has started going in a wrong direction, you know, 
in eight to 10 days without food and water, person is going to fall, he is going to die. And with the availability of the water, but no food, person can survive for nearly 50 to 60 days time. Book says 40 to 50 days time. And uh, the person is going to die because of the starvation. Uh, it's all the record starvation is acute starvation and chronic starvation. When you stop the food at once, food and water at once, just like a rosa, it is an acute starvation. When uh, you go for a dieting and you remove or you reduce your food when it's few of the things, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, or maybe you are not taking any of the few things and uh, just for the dieting reason to reduce the weight, this is called chronic starvation. The starvation, for a forensic point of view, can be accidental, suicidal, homicidal. Can be accidental, suicidal, homicidal. Maybe the building building collapsed and they are trying trying to take out the um, you know efforts and all the rescue efforts are being going on. But one of the person got trapped and maybe four days, five days have passed. Become become weak, is not being able to shout, and they, he is trapped over there. This is accidental. Homicidal is in case of a kidnapping, maybe a person will be kidnapped and they will not give him food. They will ask him to call his house and uh, arrange for the ransom. And this is for homicidal reasons or for torturing reasons, for homicidal reasons. It is also very common. But uh, uh, suicidal reason, this is for blackmailing reason. Uh, maybe the person will stop taking the food. This is for blackmailing. Uh, and like you find uh, outside press club with people, they, um, you know, uh, hunger strike for uh, months and months time, not possible. So the thing is, the mummification is uh, a modification process of putrefaction in which there will be dehydration of the tissue. 60% water will get evaporated. Porous soil is there. Any of the fluid will get absorbed. All the body water will get evaporated, there will be dehydration of the body and the factor necessary will be absence of moisture in the air and uh, the presence of uh, action of the dry air. Just like when you put uh, some kind of a chicken uh, or a chick you make a thick uh, by putting in an oven, it's a dry and hot atmosphere. All the water will come out, will be absorbed and there is a dry and hot atmosphere, it will get shriveled up all the water will get evaporated and will go towards mummification and it will get, get shrink because of the external tendon will be burned and this chicken tikka will be like mummification. Dry and hot atmosphere has been given. Then the moisture is not there and uh, persistent action of the dry air will make the shrunken skin dry, leathery, fragile, rusty, brown in color. The skin uh, adheres tightly to the bone in, and involves exposed parts first, later on internal organs, then uh, it will get shriveled up and it will go toward mummification. Mummification, it uh, takes uh, two months to two years to develop. Over here it is written three months to one year required for completion. <clears throat> the body is odor free. Muscle will take its, mus uh, its um, shape just like a deltoid and sartorius, I gave example, it will take two months to two years to develop. Features and wounds are well preserved and body trapped in closed room or cupboard, graveyards, death due to chronic arsenic or anti-money poisoning, dehydration before death. It will, when the person will get dehydrated, then, uh, then the body will go towards uh, mummification. But infected body, someone has asked me before, but infected bodies, they petrify more earlier. The medical legal importance that identity can be established. Cause of death can be concluded. Idea about time since death is being given. Artificial, mum um, artificial mummification is being produced just like uh, over there. Uh, or maybe in our anatomy dissection hall, they used to make uh, artificial mummification and uh, that condition called embalming. This was a deposit formation. These are, there are, you know, there's one thing. So today my topic was uh, the late signs of death, petrifaction, adipocene formation, mummification. Petrifaction, I told you the cause, 
mummification, I told you, dry and hot atmosphere, and adipocyte formation that is uh, because of the conversion of the body fat from oleic to stromalic acid. Now the thing is, post-mortem clock, or how you calculate times is just two minutes more. How you calculate time since death and what is post-mortem clock and uh, what is post-mortem interval. Being a doctor, you are the one who is going to declare the cause of death, time since death, weapon used in case of an unknown person, identification. And you identify a person on the basis of the parameters like race, sex, age, religion, peculiarities, habits, traits, manners. Ductile graphy, anthropometry, scar mark, tattoo mark, birth mark, occupational mark, and the biological fluid, blood, semen, saliva. You have gone through with this chapter. The cause of death we will discuss in mechanical injuries and all these uh, injuries, how, why the person has died, cause of death. But time since death is being calculated by time since death is being, you calculate time since injury, you calculate time since birth, you calculate time since delivery. You talk about, but over here we are talking about time since death, post mortem clock, or so uh, you can calculate the cooling of the body. Body loses uh, temperature three degree, then two degree, then one degree, then half degree. But scientists gave us a formula: one point five degree fall of temperature per hour, ten to twelve hours. It takes ten to twelve hours or 12 to 14 hours to come to the normal atmospheric temperature, body comes to normal atmospheric temperature in 12 to 14 hours time. And uh, this is 1.5 degree fall of, fall of temperature per hour. After cooling of the body, postmortem lividity start appearing in one to two hours, make patches in four to six hours, get complete in 12 hours, and it gets fixed up after 12 hours. That is you press you, if it is not been moving, more than 12 hours have passed. But it is moving less than 12 hours have passed. And this is called fixation of the postmortem lividity. Rather, mortis is the shortening and stiffening of the muscles after death. And it starts appearing in four to six hours, get complete in 12 hours, stay for 12 hours, goes after 12 hours. And uh, it has a value for 36 hours coming to um, the thing which we have done today, the putrefaction. Uh, you know, 10 to 12 days time, all the soft part will leave the hard part. I told you in four or five days, the nails are coming out and the marbling effect starts be in, um, before that uh, in 36 to 42 hours. And then false pugilistic attitude is there. Then the maggots start appearing. Then uh, putrefaction uh, starts and on the right leg fossa, there will be green patch or the cecum when all the body will become uh, becoming of different color and uh, putrefactive gases that have all over there. I told you that adipocyte formation, it takes one week to five weeks to develop and maybe the mummification too, it takes two months to two years to develop. In addition to that, entomology has a value, the flies will get attracted and will start giving eggs and turn to larva and then to pupa and then to adult and in 10 to 12 days time, half of them they fly and half of them they stay. I told you how to collect the maggots, that is you collect the maggots and you put in a, in a, in a bottle or a jar uh, having alcohol in it and the maggot produce proteolytic enzymes which help in destruction tissue. They crawl into deeper part by moving furrow and further explore deeper prepare to air. Um, it makes uh, the penetration and the time since death by stage and number of generation. We can decide by this. <clears throat> stomach contents. The stomach content can give an idea about, I will make it short that uh, the milk will leave the stomach in one to two hours and the bread will stomach or leave the stomach in two to three hours and the meat will leave the stomach in four to five hours time, etc., etc. <clears throat> when you do the postmortem and you have an idea that the person got uh, person got kidnapped on, on that particular day, he used to work in a multinational company, then uh, you got an idea that what time he left the house or used to leave the house 
and uh, you will find that <coughs> stomach content the uh, half of the bread is digested half of the bread is undigested that means he was kidnapped around around 9:30 10 o'clock <coughs> yeah. so the digestive changes will be there then the post mortem chemistry you will find that the sodium chloride potassium urea they will uh, they will increase and uh, potassium will remain same but sodium and chloride you know my next uh, teacher is waiting for, for this was a big topic in the last and um, the decomposition in the decomposed body you will find the potassium will be more and uh, uh, the blood urine csf and uh, vitreous humor they will give you an idea about exhumation i told you that exhumation is the digging out of body from the grave there is one thing called uh, presumption of death that you presume the person has died and if the question may arise in the following insurance claim inheritance property resolving partnership uh, you if the person is not turned up the, for seven days time there is no uh, you know clue there is no any news from his side after seven years he will be declared that he has died presumption of survivorship when there is a plane crash for the uh, hairship reasons um, being a doctor you will be the one who's going to decide that who survived last who died first who died last is for presumption of survivorship that was presumption of death presumption if the person don't turn up up till seven years time you declare he is dead but presumption of survivorship is who died first who died last the small children and old people, they die earlier than the adult or healthier people die later. The people who are diseased, they die earlier. The healthy person dies later. The person who's weak, he dies earlier and the healthy person dies later. And the person who's having head injury will die earlier. And the person who is having abdominal injury or other injuries will die later. This is how we <clears throat> decide about presumption of death. This is, thank you very much. Any question? Maceration, basically somebody has asked me a question, what is maceration? Maceration is uh, when the baby dies in the womb of mother and there is no chance of uh, bacteria uh, taking an entry, only the internal enzymes will make a destruction. This will produce maceration, sweetish, disagreeable smell will be there. And uh, uh, most of uh, now, rest of the questions you can ask me on my email, mukaram.ali. Right. Thank you very much.